Hello, this is my drop my life video, but I'm only focusing on language learning because you really do not want to ask a woman about her life. The video will be so long that you'll fall asleep 3 minutes in that it's assuming it actually gets eroded. When I was in elementary school, I was taught that China is shaped like a rooster. So if we keep that in mind, then I was born in the stomach area of the rooster called Fujian. Hey, maybe that's why I love food so much. Then again, who doesn't, right? <laughs> the saying Ming Yi Si Wei Tian fits me really well. At home, I spoke Fuzhou needs because of my mom and my sister. At school, I spoke Mandarin because the school system required the teachers to teach us in Mandarin. A lot of the kids at school spoke Fuzhou needs anyways during the break time. After all, Fuzhou needs was our mother tongue. When I was 11, my mom signed me up for a summer course for English so that I could be more prepared to go to the US. Because every kid wants to go to summer classes during their summer, right? I think I'd rather take naps. I was under 30 centimeter height at that time. Yeah, I was a pretty person. Well, I am still pretty. I remember I was so proud when I could pronounce the alphabet. At one point, I seriously thought that I knew English right then. Because when I saw the alphabet, I would go, I know how to say that in English. It's X-U-E-X-I-A-O. Yeah, I spell all the words. I feel so silly whenever I think about it though. When I moved to the U.S., I was ready to start 6th grade, which is first year of the U.S. middle school or junior high. Because I was so short, the lady of the front desk told me that I was in the wrong school and pointed to an elementary school direction. Wow, thank you for dredging the book by its cover. Anyways, I did manage to sign up to the middle school, which was the correct school. My first landing place was Brooklyn, New York. I cried so much the first day of school because I couldn't understand the thing. My summer course was pretty much useless. I don't remember how I got around school. <laughs> I had pretty much the same classmates for all my classes. There was this one Chinese kid called Nick who would translate for me sometimes. He was from Fuzo as well, but he hung out with the Cantonese kids and was mainly speaking Cantonese. It was weird for me at first because I thought Mandarin would be more common. Nope. I was really lucky that I got into a school that taught ESL classes in English only. I had this teacher called Mr. Sam who only taught you in English. Only in a really needed situation, then he would talk to you in either Mandarin or Cantonese. I don't know if you have seen one of this or not. It's a picture where people of all races holding their hands around the earth. It was truly a multicultural experience and a really good exposure. People often say that you get to meet people of all colors. No, you don't. I have yet to meet a pink or a blue person in real life. I was an introvert and didn't know how to make friends, but I did have one girl who I could talk to every now and then. Her name was Cece. She had me listen to her CD play one day. It was songs by Backstreet Boys. I didn't fall in love with the songs right away, but I did later. After being introduced to English songs, I started searching for music similar to Backstreet Boys and I found a really good radio station. I think it was 97 something in the FM channel. I then started listening to music radio station every single night. Because my whole family, four people in total, shared one room, I had to use earphones so I wouldn't disturb anyone else. I think listening to music every night really helped me pick up my English. While it was really great, I always worried what if I got strangled by the earphone and die? You know, like the wire just start twisting around my neck out of the blue. Well, it would be a pretty embarrassing death, but I wouldn't be awake to know it. On top of an English-only school environment and radio, my dad got me a dictionary, an electronic dictionary that has a little keyboard that you can look at words and have the machine pronounce the words for you. It was a common device for Asian kids. It was really helpful too. I used it every single day to look at words and do my homework. Since I was an ESL student, every year we had to take an exam which included writing and wrestling to determine whether you get to go to regular classes. I was never able to pass the test. I think the listening part got me every single time. After two years, I was still not able to pass the exam, but I was at the point where I started talking English on my own. Like I would burst out English phrases without thinking in Mandarin first. 
Sadly to say, but the popular phrase WTF was one of the early sentences that popped out. Eighth grade came around and we moved to Ohio. There was no ESL class, so I was in all regular classes. I was probably the only Asian kid in the school. I didn't know how to make friends and I was afraid of cultural gaps, so I was always by myself. I turned to online games for friendship. Kids, man, I was just a little kid. I played a game called TV for a few years and I actually learned a lot of English from it. Mainly slang stuff. While an introvert in real life, I actually made friends in game. I had a husband, a mom, a dad, and guild members. <laughs> I don't even know how that happened, but I was happy in game. Except when I got blackmailed later by some kids online and then I quit. Aside from playing games, I watched what it was so that my sister would be watching, which was mainly Cantonese shows. I never picked up Cantonese though. The one and only Cantonese line I said was to this smart girl in class to ask her for notes because she did really well in the ESL class and I looked up to her. When I got to ninth grade, I started learning to write in cursive. I didn't know that such handwriting exists. I saw this girl's note in history class and I was like, wow. Of course, I didn't tell her that. I said that in my mind. I started learning French in ninth grade also for fun. I had a really amazing teacher and she was one of the good things that happened in my life. I stayed in high school for two months in Ohio, then we moved to New Jersey. I was first in a mostly black and Hispanic school. I was bullied, so I dropped out. I was already feeling invisible and started to think about friendship instead of just education. So getting bullied didn't really help. I then signed up for high school in a different city. It was mostly white and Hispanic. I got bullied again. This time, I dropped out seriously. I stopped going to school for two years. I turned to games. I met a really nice guy who actually encouraged me to go back to school. And I did. I convinced my mom to let me go to school in New York since a multicultural place made me feel comfortable and New York was the only place I had a good experience. I went to a high school in New York and I broke my record. I made three friends, even though they were all Asians, but hey, that was a huge achievement for me. I started playing tennis my second year in high school and met my best friend there. She was the captain and I was their second single player. Even though I played tennis, I couldn't run for my life. <laughs> My high school required three years of foreign language. Since French wasn't offered, I took Italian. Only my first year was taught by teachers. The other years, I studied on my own because my schedule was full. I don't remember a thing except child. <laughs> As of English, I had this super amazing teacher for my AP English class. He was super straight, but he really opened up my views about literature. It was one of the best language learning experience ever. I'm now in college, uhhuh, no more dropout. Well, I hope. <laughs> One day I stumped up in Hyung Woon Sun's videos on how he taught English on his own. After seeing the MLR project he started, I was inspired to recall my own language learning progress and finding back my love for language. And here I am, I make videos sharing my mentoring knowledge and practicing my language during my free time. <laughs> Thank you!